The Biblical Truth of Our Hymns. Looks like number 87. Probably lost count a long time ago, but we're up to the 80s. And we got a fascinating hymn today. A hymn that I have not personally sung and heard in a long time. The Great Physician. And it's written by William Hunter with reference to Richard Kem Penthel. And this is one of them hymns that has loads of information with it. My hymn though has four stanzas, and yet there are many more. So it identifies Jesus as a spiritual physician, a doctor. And let's see, read it through all this. He's a Methodist uh, minister. And all right, uh, Hunter's 125 hymns were published, and this, there's seven stanzas, and the stanzas were based on reframed by Richard Kemp Felt in 1777, and the result was from a railroad accident where a large number of casualties. But several medical professionals were on the train who took part in saving lives, which would otherwise been many fatal fatalities. That's interesting. So here's another train wreck. And we did Philip Bliss last week. Once for all, we did him before, but we learned that Philip Bliss was involved in a train wreck. He went back in that train, <coughs> excuse me, to get his wife, and he died with his wife in that train wreck sorrowful story now like i said we've got four stanzas here and the first one now i'm looking at what we got here because i want to make sure because it's the order the first one is the stanza is to cheer us the great physician now is near Presently, the sympathetic, the sympathetic, yeah, sympathetic, yeah, I can't say the word, sympathizing Jesus. Some words I can't say. And Jesus cares. And Jesus is now present. Woe be to those who are left behind when Jesus comes for his church. He speaks the drooping heart to cheer. Time of sorrow, time of trouble. Yet what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, hear the voice of Jesus. Listen. And he was tempted in all points like we were. In Hebrews chapter 4. So he understands. He went through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The same temptations that the devil, he was attacked by the devil. And the sympathy is shown in many of his miracles. As he went about healing and helping those people around him in the nation of Israel. And we have a God that cares. We don't have a statue God where he has ears and he can't hear. We don't want and have a God that wants blood shed. The Islam Muslim God wants you to go out there and, and slay people in the name of religion if they want to be infidels and continue in their infidelity. Not our Jesus. Our Jesus shed his blood, God's blood, that we may have life. And he tells us, go in all the world and preach the gospel. If they won't listen, move on to somebody else. And in the scriptures, we're to weep with those that weep. We're to rejoice with those that rejoice. We're to comfort and pray and lift up each other. That's Christianity. I mean... I come from the realm of, of Catholicism, Roman Catholic, and the priests don't care if you don't have any more money. I mean, you got to pay for those prayers. And always wondered me, you know, the Catholic teaching is, 
you can pray and light candles or pay for candles, light candles, for a person that's in purgatory to get out. Well, what if you get into purgatory, the Catholic teaching, not the Bible teaching, but what if you get there and no one loved you no, and everybody hated your guts? We we're recently having the coronavirus, and many Catholic churches the mass has been canceled because the coronavirus in six feet. And listen, the mass is the way to get to heaven, supposedly through the Catholic Church. And if you don't have the last rites done by the priest of the Catholic Church, you're in danger of going somewhere. And yet the Catholic Church does not give you the assurance of the Christian through the Bible and through the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ. So there is no comfort in religion. And yet Jesus Christ, our great physician, cares and loves us. We love him because he first loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave. God commended his love to us while yet we were sinners. The great loving God that is absent from the gods of religion cares for his creation. When Adam and Eve sinned, though God said, do not eat of that fruit. When Adam and Eve ate that fruit, God could have said, to hell with you. I'm getting out of here. Goodbye. See you later. Deal with it yourself. And he could just let man die and go off into hell. No, the long suffering, the mercy, the graceful God that we have. He's a wonderful God. Your many sins are forgiven. All my sins. And yet, why would he say many and not all? Every Christian was going to have wood, hay, or stubble at the judgment seat of Christ. Because there are sins that we have not truthfully confess if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness but what about that sin we really wanted to do and that half-heartedness oh lord forgive me what about that sin we did we didn't remember we did and when it comes time to the bedtime confession we forgot it's not that god will not forgive all our sins being listen to in April 27th, and I, I used to say April 21st, I was incorrect on the date, it's actually April 27th, 1987. When I was saved from September 6, 1968, the day I was born, to April 27th, 1987, all my sins have been clean, wiped off, washed in the blood of Jesus. Now, since April 27th, 1987, there have been sins I've done that. I have not confessed. There have been sins that I've done willfully, wonderfully, and gave a half-hearted confession. And then there will be sins when I die or the rapture that I never had a chance to confess. And I am not downplaying the fact is that God can and will forgive us all our sins, but every Christian is going to have wood, hay, or stubble. Oh, hear the voice of Jesus. The song of Hunter, William Hunter, the, the hymn. I did Psalm because we're doing, going through the book of Psalms, our family. The, the hymn of, of Hunter, what's he want us to see? He wants us to see the words of God. He wants us to hear the words of God. How wonderful. Go on your way in peace to heaven and wear a crown with Jesus. Now, Jesus is going to have many crowns, Revelation 12. But when we get to one of the, the attributes of the Holy Spirit, the fruit is love, joy, peace. You don't get no peace without righteousness. And righteousness comes through Jesus Christ. And we'll get to heaven. Wear a crown. And those crowns are earned. Jesus provides forgiveness and heals the brokenhearted through the gospel. 
those who have come for him forgiveness go on their way through peace. No more a, a, a guilty conscience. And the blessed hope, the glorious hope, I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going through heaven through the scriptures. Listen, when the devil comes along and says, what about that sin? Here's my reaction. And the devil does bring up, and my own self remembers the old sins of my past. <clears throat> this is what I do. Say, hey, it's under the blood. If God has forgiven it, and if God has forgotten, so should I. And then the other option is, what if I don't know of that sin? And there have been sins that, that the devil or myself have brought up. Maybe God. I feel myself going to sneeze, so I apologize. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> you, forgive me. Uh, what I'm saying is, what if, what if we're a member of a sin? And we're not sure if we confessed it. And say, Lord God, you're an all-forgiving Father. You've forgiven every sin that I've confessed. I'm not sure if I confessed this sin. Or I know I have not confessed this sin. In the name of the Lord Jesus, if we confess our sins, he's faithful enough to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord God, forgive me this sin. And then, okay, now it's under the blood. And through him, if we do after salvation, salvation is only by Jesus Christ. But if we, after salvation, if we earn a crown for our works and duties as servants to Jesus Christ, then we can look forward wearing a crown with him. And the crowns are so easy to earn. So we got the hope, the blessed, glorious hope of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Stanza three, all glory to his to the dying lamb. The lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. The lamb of God. The Passover lamb. The Jewish lamb. If you got a Gentile lamb, if you got an Italian lamb, you got a Chinese lamb, you got an Oriental lamb. You got an American lamb, that's not going to save your soul. It has to be the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And only by that Lamb are you to have the glory, and that glory of Jesus Christ. I now believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus April 27, but I believe in Jesus more today on June 16th. It's a believing every day. Though one day I had the believing salvation that Jesus Christ was able to save my soul. I love the blessed Savior's name. I love the name of Jesus. Oh, isn't that great? A hymn that keeps saying Jesus, 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 Jesus. We don't find many hymns that mention Jesus. We don't find him. Jesus is the Savior because he's the Lamb of God that has shed his blood. Like the Lamb shed their bloods on the night of the Passover when the nation of Israel coming out of Egypt, the Lord Jesus Christ slain his blood on Calvary's cross that I may come out of the world. I may come out of darkness to light. May I come in from hell to glory by the Lamb. And in order for us to have the salvation of the blood of the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, we must first believe in him. Acts 16, 30 and 31. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You're not going to go to heaven without belief. Oh, my mama wants me to go to heaven. My church will get me to heaven. My baptism will get me to heaven. Uh, God will judge my good works in the end. If my good works outweigh my bad works, I'm going to go, no, absolutely, correctly not, you're going to heaven. You've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe on Mary. Mary will get you into hell. 
I believe in the UFO, UFOs and aliens from out. I, you are going to hell. Salvation to get to the Father is the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father in heaven but by me. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You got and must believe. And then those who do receive this salvation of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, his name, the name of Jesus, the only name that can save. It ain't no name of the Pope. It ain't no great name of a preacher. It ain't no great name of history, but the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And then we have, we have a stanza here, stanza four, which is not in my hymnal. And it states, the great physician dispels our guilt and fear. His name dispels our guilt and fear. No other name but Jesus. Oh, there's that name again. Jesus. Oh, how my soul delights to hear the charming name of Jesus. That stands, I don't have that stanza for it. I don't know why they would eliminate that stanza four. Stanza four upholds and lifts up the name of Jesus. And the, 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 the people who put this, this, this hymnal together, they'll put the stupid hymn. My eyes have seen the coming of the... Shut up. You didn't see no Lord. You saw the Northern Army. That's what you saw. America, America. Now shut up with America. America, it ain't even in the Bible. You put the fourth line of Amazing Grace that came out of a movie of uh, 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 Uncle Tom's Cavern, but you can't put the fifth line of the great position about the name of Jesus. I got a problem with the editors and writers of this book. That's why we're doing the biblical truths of our hymn, because some of the hymns are garbage. Some of the hymns, you got to realize what you're singing about. Some of the hymns, you got to know the history about. Some of the hymns, you got to realize they're wrong. Some of the hymns are great and should be sung. Some of the hymns don't even have the name of Jesus. And some of the hymns that mention the name of Jesus has been eliminated. And forgotten. Let me read that stanza again. His name dispels great and fear. What's that name? No other name but Jesus. Oh, how my soul delights to hear the charming name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The greatest name I know. You're not going to find the name of Jesus in Amazing Grace. You're not going to find the name of Jesus in America. You're not going to find the name of Jesus, my country, tis of thee. It's the name of Jesus. Look at once for all. We did that last week. Free from law, oh happy condition. Jesus has bled. The name of Jesus. Again. Jesus removes all our spiritual diseases and sin, including our guilt and our fears through the gospel and the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news of God is Jesus. This is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. Who is the beloved son? Jesus. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. What is that name? It's the name of Jesus. The people okay, took Peter and John and said, listen, we don't want you to preach that name Jesus no more in Jerusalem. 
Even today, in, the, in 2020, there are the name of Jesus is forbidding in nations. The name of Jesus is forbidding in buildings. The name of Jesus is forbidding amongst congregations. Even the name of Jesus is, is, is forbidding in some churches. And Jesus, the wonderful, great name, is taken as a cuss. Jesus Christ is mentioned as a damning word. Oh, the name of Jesus, the glorious name of Jesus. And we must remember, and there is no other name found for salvation but in the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. How I love thee. It was Jesus Christ that saved my soul, April 27. It wasn't no Pope. It wasn't no Mary. It was no priest. It wasn't my mother. It wasn't my grandfather. It was nothing but the name and the person of the, of the Son of God who is God, Jesus. And we've got to have the Jesus who is God. And we have to have the Jesus who is the Son. Because Jehovah Witnesses say that Jesus is not God. And that's a heresy. And that's a lie. And the Jehovah Witness, Jesus, can't save your soul if he's not Jesus, God. You better believe it. Stanza four, or stanza, and will be stanza five. And when to that bright world, and it's a bright world according to Revelation, so we find this hymn is, is saturated with the gospel. We find that if we were to sing this hymn in, in the church, we would be saturated with the Bible. And I told you today, when we started it, it has been forever. I can't even remember the last church that we sang this hymn. Revelation says that New Jerusalem heaven is going to be lit not by the sun, not by the moon, but by the glory of the Lamb of God, by the glory of God that has an emerald rainbow around its throne, and just the city is garnished with all precious stones. The place has the golden street that is clear. It is going to be magnificent, bright, up holy, with no darkness at all why isn't the great position saying in the churches today it must have too much bible in it it must have too much jesus in it when to the bright world above we rise to be with jesus where we're going we're going to heaven is that good that's not good enough what do you mean when i get to heaven no i want to get to jesus to be absent from the body and present in heaven. No, 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 no. To be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Who is the Lord? Jesus. Forget about heaven. It's to be absent from the body with Jesus I'm going to be. When I take my final breath here, if the Lord tarries and I die, I will open my, I will close my eyes to this world. I will open my eyes to see Jesus. Glory to God. You better believe this hymn excites me. We'll sing around the throne of love. The love, the throne of love. For God so loved the world, I said, we love him because he first loved us. God commended his love to us while we were yet sinners. For God is love. And when I get to the throne of God, I get to heaven after seeing Jesus and forever to see Jesus at the throne. When I look at that throne. The only reason why I am at that throne is because the love of God. Forever. It ain't because I'm good. It ain't because I'm bad. It ain't because I am who I am. It's because who Jesus is. His name. We'll sing around the throne of love his name and the name of Jesus. When we get the glory, it's going to be about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Glory is great hymn. Well, I can see why this hymn's not sung in churches. It's too much about Jesus and, and not enough about our pastor. It's too much about Jesus and not a much about our denomination. It's too much about Jesus and not enough about me. I would think that would be one of the reasons. And before we get to the chorus, we haven't even got to the chorus. We haven't even got to the chorus. There's, there's another added note here. It says here. 
There are two stanzas not included in any of our books. So there's two more. Oh, forgive me, I already. So we have four stanzas in this book, one's missing. And there's seven stanzas. Two of them, the, 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 the author of this report says, I can't find them. But they're in the originals. Oh, oh. I'm not talking about the Bible, I'm talking about the hymnals. It says, the children. Got a bus ministry, love the children. Suffer the little children to come on to me. Why ain't this hymn sung? Why ain't this added? To the children, too. Can't forget about the children. Children touch my heart when I see them at the street. I see them on the street, the street ministry we have at the farmer's market. Both great and small. Who love the name of Jesus. There's that name again. May now accept the gracious call to work and live for Jesus. The stands of Mizzen. Not mentioned in this hymnal. About the little children. And there's a hymn going through my head. Little, I can't. It's in my head. It ain't going to come. There's too many clouds in my head. Jesus loves the little children. This hymn says the little children. Bring the little children. Bring the little children. Both great and small. Who love the name of Jesus. Don't. Parents. Don't forbid your children to go to church to hear Jesus. Uh, we had one. We had several times in, in the public ministry. My wife has gone to the glory. Then we get so mad. We have seen parents rip their children away from us because we're bringing Jesus. We have seen parents tell their children they're foolish. Don't don't believe on their Jesus. We have seen many parents direct their children away from the ministry of Jesus and come into Jesus to be saved. And that parent, if they don't correct themselves and they don't repent, they'll find a millstone about their neck cast into the lake of fire forever because they tried to get their children away from Jesus. And Jesus said, suffer the little children to come to me. I am so sorry that this hymn does not mention this stanza about little children. I take part in, in the children's ministry of my church. I, I, I get the money, you know, for whatever, they, you know, the gas, or whatever, to get those children there. That's the best I can do with the children's ministry. Children take advantage of me. Uh, my pastor, I told my pastor, and he know, I support, you know, gasoline, whatever they do with the money for the children. That's, uh, hopefully the Lord will take that as my part of helping those children to come to Jesus. Pastor said, oh, I think it was last week, there was one little girl that said, I, I, I thank you for bringing me. I thank you for coming. I thank you that I'm here. I'm thankful I'm in the name of Jesus. Why is this? Why is this stanza taken out of the book? And we got the stupid songs about America, and we got the stupid songs of the Civil War. But we take out this wonderful thing about children come to Jesus. You could fit it. Make the book a little longer. Make the make a little. There, hey, listen. There are there are stanzas in here. I got one right here. Just open it. Jesus loves me. Six stanzas. And we did Jesus Loves Me. And that was a great story. Uh, I believe, is that the one where the it was written for the child that was dying? Or Jesus Loves Even Me? It was one of them. But here's a here's a hymn that has six stanzas in it. Let's see if I can find it. Here's one that has five. Going through it just real quick. Just real quick. One's got five. 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 Is six, six, six. Oh, he said six, six, six. Oh, shut up. Five. You could have fit the seven stanzas of this wonderful great hymn. Too much Jesus, I guess. And then the next stanza, missing. Come. That's an invitation. 
Come now, let us reason again. Though your sins be as scarlet, they should be made white as snow. There's come, I forget what it is, in uh, Revelation chapter 22. Come and, and uh, something freely. Come. Why is this stanza the great position about children? Why is it missing? Why is this missing in stanza five when it says come? Must be too much about Jesus. Stanza four again, not found. They said that stanza four cannot be found in any hymn, but the original. Children too, bright, great, and small, who love the name of Jesus may now accept the gracious call to work and live for Jesus. Why have you taken that out? Now watch this other one. It's two, two stanzas not to be found in hymn books. You better believe I'm excited. Come, brethren. That's save people. Help me sing his praise. Is that not what we go to church? Do we not sing together? Congregation sings together. Are we not close to praise the Lord? Except for when we do contemporary music. My, my church don't. I mean, when churches do contemporary music. Not when churches, you know, they have the drums and electric guitars. And all, not my church. But, uh, you know, they, they get up there to satisfy the flesh. Not my church, thank God. But he starts off with this hymn, Come, brethren, let me sing, help me sing the pray his praises. That's what all the hymn service and singing for the congregation is about. All of us together in one unity to sing towards God. Now watch. Come, brethren, help me sing his praise. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Sympathize in Jesus, hear the voice of Jesus, believe in Jesus, to be with Jesus, the voice of Jesus, a crown with Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, live for Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. When was the last time your church said we're going to sing the great position? Come, brethren, help me sing his praise, the praise, the name of Jesus. Oh, sisters, we've got men, we've got children, we've got the saints, and this hymn also includes the women. Oh, sisters, all your voices raised. Oh, bless the name of the name of Jesus. You know what the great physician says? It says, let's. Hear the voice of Jesus. Let's see Jesus. Let's be with Jesus. Salvation is about Jesus. Bring the children to Jesus. Let the children worship Jesus. And the brethren sing to Jesus. And the sisters, our sisters in the Lord, come sing with us. It's all about Jesus. And when we get to heaven, it's all about Jesus. Now, what is wrong with this hymn? Nothing. So if you're going to say, Stowey's doing the biblical truth of our hymn, he's going to find fault with every single hymn. No, not with all of them. How many times in your church do you sing Amazing Grace that has no Jesus? And Amazing Grace, the last line, the fourth line, has been added, and it's from, from a Hollywood production of uh, 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 my uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin. And there's usually, I think there's six stands in that one, and all six are not there, but the Hollywood line from, from a movie is in there. And yet you don't sing The Great Physician. And what will be if you had all seven stanzas of great position? What will be to, we're going to sing stanzas one, two, and the last? No, 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 no. This one needs to be sung, all seven, in unity. Maybe, glory to God, when we get to heaven, maybe we'll sing the great position. And we'll do it again. And we'll do it again. As Jesus puts a smile on his face and says, it's about me, Father. And the Father looks to the Son, yes, Son. And when they play that contemporary music and they play that junk and ju all the angels in heaven probably get their, no, 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 oh, man, that stuff stinks, but I, I know.
The Great Physician by William Hunter. What did I say? What was he? He was a Methodist, I think it was. Methodist. Old time Methodist. Man, we need some old time forget Baptist. No, we need some old time Methodist, man. Man, they they went through the great revivals. They went in there, hellfire and preaching. I'm part Methodist. Not with a well, not with a modern method, but man, the old fire, hellfire, preaching. Man, you better get down. You better smell that brimstone. You better believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you better serve the Lord Jesus Christ, and you better get the right Bible, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. The glory to God ain't ain't your church. Not today. Go to Revelation chapter three. And find where it says unto the church of Laodicea and, and follow that all the way to the end of chapter 3 and see what God thinks about our church age. <sighs> see about our church age where God is knocking on the church door. Will you come out? That's why the great physician. This was 1859. And then the original, Richard Kemp, Bentfeld, 1777. I am definitely, for surely, great physician. Yeah, all right. Thumbs up on that one. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord willing, tomorrow afternoon, Tamuz. Mary Tay Moose Mass gives you a hint and resurrection. Lord willing, Thursday, evil, study of evil. Friday at the park, later on we'll put, we'll put the video. Lord willing would be the study of the Gospel of John. We're going to look at Moses and Elijah. Saturday morning, if you pray for us, we're at the farmer's market. That video will be posted later as we uh, street preach. I ask you earnestly to pray that last week, though it was rained out, they had to, they hired a DJ to be there. So I pray for the DJ souls. But man, that equipment I don't pray for. But just pray that God can use my voice to lift up and exalt Jesus Christ. And to be God. To God be the glory in all others. All else is sin. And, man, get this one out. Tell your friends about it. Hey, you, you want to see him get excited? You want to see him talk about a great hymn? Man, the great physician. Glory to God in the highest. Amen.